Let's carry on. You and me. Your freedom and my freedom. To take it a stage further, much the same goes for the way we see each other. On this picture, obviously, if I'm going to be free, I need to be free as far as possible, anyhow, from you. We can't be free in the same space. If I'm here, you can't be here also, if you think visually. We'll push each other out. So it's easy to think that the ideal relationship is essentially a relationship of tolerance. I must tolerate your unconstrained area, and you must tolerate mine. Freedom, then, is about pursuing your own good in your own way, so long as you don't deprive others of their good or impede their efforts to attain their good. The underlying tenor here is beautifully enshrined in that indispensable repository of wisdom, Wikipedia. <laughs> Under the entry of freedom, we are told, freedom in philosophy is the human value or situation to act according to one's will without being held up by the power of others. From a philosophical point of view, freedom can be defined as the capacity to determine your own choices. It can be defined negatively as an absence of constraint, subordination, and servitude. In other words, unobstructed choice. Now, to be fair, they go on to speak about a positive side to freedom, but it's significant they start with the negative, the absence of constraint. John's Gospel, chapter 8, the saying of Jesus, If the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. Does this really mean that at root, if the Son makes you free, you'll be able to pursue your own good in your own way so long as you don't deprive others of their good or impede their efforts to attain their good? Or does a picture hold us captive? And then there's you and me, your freedom and mine. What of the libertarian tradition, according to which freedom is about me, the individual, pursuing my own good in my own way, provided I don't impede others? A caricature, I know, but basically that's the gist of it. Think through musical sound, and this kind of model crumbles. In this piano chord, these strings don't simply allow each other room, tolerate each other. They build each other up, enhance and enrich each other. Those other strings become fully themselves in relation to each other. Together they create a richness of sound not possible on their own. And we can hear that in the one heard space. Freedom is not fundamentally about self-assertion in a vacant space, a space into which we project ourselves until we bump into somebody else. Freedom is not a possession. It's something that happens to us. The Christian faith declares we are freed by the other, for the other. Not far from where I live in, when I'm in uh, North Carolina, anyhow, is an amazing project that happens down the road called Reality Ministry. It's a young man I've known a number of years set up an enterprise out of nothing uh, that I've been involved with for a little while. Every week, disadvantaged young people, young people at risk, gather to meet, to hang around, play sport, sing. Many are, are what our society would call handicapped. One of them is confined to a chair 24 hours a day and can only talk through a computer device. One evening he told us, in effect, this was the one place in his life where he felt truly free. He'd been freed by the kind of love he'd received there. But also, just as important, when we listened to him, as the team got to know him, they found out they too were freed by him. Freed from inhibitions, freed from years of prejudice, freed from the fear of showing affection physically. Freed by the other, for the other. Freedom isn't basically about preserving my space, though there are times we might need to do that. It's not basically about maximizing the choices open to me, though it may involve that. Deeper down, it's about being freed by another who loves you, whatever, and for another you can love, whatever. That way we become more fully the people we were meant to be. In other words, baffling as it seems at first, freedom is a gift before anything else. Christians say a gift of the Holy Spirit as we come to know the Son, who himself is fully free. If the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. On the visual model, that makes little sense. No one else can make me free. Other people are basically a threat to my freedom. I need to be freed from the other. But think with the ear, and we'll be pushed straight to the point. Authentic freedom is delivered as we are loved into freedom by the Son, a love we discover as others love us in his name and we are freed to love others in his name. 